Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Turn of leaf. So now we are going to talk about dicot and monocot leaf. So we will start our discussion here with dicot leaf. So once we are able to understand the structure of dicot leaf, we really don't need to understand monocot leaf because there is a lot of similarities between the two. Let us now talk about a dicot leaf. So what do we, you think the leaf, internal structure of a leaf could be? So let us try to understand the internal structure of a leaf. Now as I had mentioned before, the outermost layer is going to be the epidermis. Now in case of leaf, the upper surface is also epidermis and the lower surface is also epidermis. Right? Now this above surface of epidermis is known as the adaxial surface and the lowermost surface is known as abaxial surface. So basically the leaf is protected on both sides by epidermis. Right? Now it is seen that on the upper, even above the uh, epidermis, there is a waxy layer. So a waxy layer is present even above the epidermis and this waxy layer is known as cuticle. So this waxy layer is cuticle and what is the purpose of a waxy layer anyways to prevent dehydration because from leaf if too much of water is lost to the environment I mean it will become very very difficult. Now it is also seen that the thickness of this cuticle decreases as we go down. I mean it is maximum at the topmost surface of the leaf. The cuticle is the thickest but as you go down and you gradually reach towards the lowest surface you see that the cuticle has become very thin. It is no more that thick so the thickness reduces as you go down. So what is the reason behind that? Now the sunlight is most intense on the upper surface right because the sun is somewhere here. Where is the sun? Somewhere here right. So the sunlight will fall on the upper surface directly. So the sunlight will be maximum on the upper surface. Correct? Now wherever the sunlight is maximum more and more water will try to evaporate Right? So you need a stronger protection to prevent water loss on the, those surfaces which is more exposed to sunlight. That is why the thickness of cuticle is more on the upper surfaces. Now as you go down, the intensity of sunlight decreases. So you really don't need a very thick cuticle. So gradually the thickness of the cuticle decreases as you go down from upper layer to the lower layers. Now when you talk about stomata, what are stomata? The minute pores which are present on the epidermis of leaves, right? We, we, we talked so much about stomata when we were talking about the uh, epidermal tissue system, right? So where is where are those stomata located? So those stomata are nothing but the open, the pores here, these, these do not the pores here. So these are nothing but the stomata. That is the minute spaces. Right? So these are your stoma. Now singular of stomata is stoma. Right? Now it is also seen that the number of stomata is more on the upper epidermis than on the lower one for most of the plants. So the number of stomata which you see on the upper epidermis is generally more than what you see on the lower epidermis. However, in case of aquatic plants, it is seen that the number of stomata in the lower epidermis is more than the upper one. So purpose of the stomata, we don't need to discuss it again because we know what it is. They are the small pores through which gaseous exchange take place and which also regulate the amount of water present inside the leaf, right? Okay. Now let us talk about the middle layer of the leaf. That is the most important part to be discussed here. What is there in the middle? 
Now, this middle layer of the leaf is known as mesophyll. Meso means middle. So, mesophyll is nothing but the middle layer. Now, this middle layer is made up of two types of cells. The upper portion of this layer is made up of cells which are arranged side by side, somewhat like this. So, one cell adjacent to another cell. This is how they are arranged in the upper mesophyll layer, like this. Right? And this layer, what do we call this layer? This layer is known as the palisade mesophyll. Why do we call it palisade? Because palisade means side by side. So this is called palisade mesophyll layer. Right? So here too many cells are present and they are, there is not much empty spaces between them. They are all compactly arranged. So what is the purpose of this palisade mesophyll layer? The purpose of this layer is to trap sunlight. Now this is on the upper side, right? So the intensity of sunlight on the this layer will be more than this layer, right? So here more and more cells are compactly arranged so that more and more sunlight can be trapped. So basically this layer will trap the sunlight, correct? And then we will see how photosynthesis will take place. Okay, so this is your upper layer. Now what is there in the lower layers? Now in the lower layers, we have another type of cells with a lot of empty space, which are arranged somewhat like this. These are the cells. Now this layer is known as spongy mesophyll. Why is it called spongy? Because there is so much of empty space here. See, I am drawing just a rough diagram. So, just to make you understand how the structure is basically. So, this layer is spongy mesophyll because there is so much of empty space. Now, let us try to understand why is how this kind of arrangement or how this kind of structure help leaves to perform photosynthesis. So, that is one important part here. Now, this spongy uh, mesophyll cells, they allow space to accommodate gases which is also needed for photosynthesis. So, the gases, for example, stomata openings are there. So, these stomata, the gases will come inside, right? So, these gases, where will they stay? The gases will get spaces here. Right? So the spongy mesophyll has a lot of empty spaces to store all the gases which will be later needed for photosynthesis. And where does photosynthesis happen? Photosynthesis happens in the palisade mesophyll layer because in this layer chloroplast is present. So chloroplast is present in this layer. So somewhere chloroplast is present. Now when light comes, this light is trapped and light comes to this layer. Carbon, the gases like carbon dioxide also reaches this layer, light also reaches this layer. So now all the ingredients of photosynthesis are there. Right? So all photosynthesis ingredients are there. Therefore, the process of photosynthesis take place in the palisade mesophyll layer. Now these stomata, they will take in carbon dioxide and they will give out oxygen during the process of photosynthesis. Right? Okay. Now you might think, where are the vascular bundles? Because the vascular bundles, xylem and phloem, should be present in the leaves as well. Because they will only help in conduction. Now when we see these spongy mesophyll, they are all connected by the tube-like structures, which are nothing but 
the vascular bundles so these tube like structures so here in this picture just imagine it has tube like structures right so they will actually carry the food which is prepared here to different parts of the leaves as well as to different parts of the plant right okay so this is all about the structure of a dicot leaf so now let us look at a better picture to understand things better so for now you understood how the leaves are it just have two layers of epidermis cuticle and it has the main mesophyll layer where you have palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll palisade mesophyll they are compactly arranged arranged side by side so that more and more cells can be accommodated in a small amount of space so that they can trap more and more sunlight chloroplast is also present in this layer whereas the below mesophyll layer is the spongy mesophyll where the cells are arranged with a lot of spaces in between them these spaces are used to store gases which are later required for the process of photosynthesis let us look at this structure now so now this will become clear to you so this green colored structure which you see is nothing but the cuticle and the pink layer is nothing but your epidermis. So here also you can see at the bottom also you have one pink layer of epidermis and one green layer of cuticle. Right now below that this upper layer is nothing but the palisade mesophyll. So here you can see the cells are compactly arranged with each, arranged to each other. The below layer, so this layer, if you see, this layer is nothing but the spongy mesophyll. They have lot of empty spaces in between to store the gases. What about the vascular tissues? This is the vascular tissue, the xylem and the phloem. Here the cross section of the vascular tissue is shown. So these tissues will help in conducting the food which gets prepared in this mesophyll layer to different parts of the leaf. So here epidermis, ataxial epidermis, that is the upper surface of leaf and abaxial epidermis, the lower surface, more stomata on abaxial epidermis. That means the lower surface has more stomata generally. However, in some plants, it is more on the upper surface. Mesophyll, it is made up of parenchyma cells. Okay, one thing I forgot to tell you was all these palisade cells and the uh, spongy cells, they are all parenchyma cells. So palisade parenchyma are elongated cells arranged parallel to each other. Spongy parenchyma are round cells with large spaces and air cavities. Okay, and the last important part is vascular bundles. These vascular bundles are seen in veins and midrib. They are surrounded by thick walled bundle sheath cells. So here also you see the bundle sheath cells are present. That is the sclerenchyma cells surrounding the vascular bundle that is present here. Now when you say where are these vascular bundles present, if you look at the leaf, look at the veins and the midrib, basically the tube like structures are present inside them through which they reach each and every corner of the leaf. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.